the sweat is real, that's because really out here doing it. <laughs> oh. That pack is loaded with meat. There's not an ounce left for anything else. I've just got everything jammed into my pockets. I have to wear my sweatshirt, my jacket, and I'm just dripping sweat. But I finished the uphill mile. Now I've got two miles down some steep stuff. I'm home free. Whew. left on this camera, forgot all my memory cards. Gonna have to make it quick. I bet you wanna see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. Probably he's not a big buck like that to his damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. More like this. That's a bad day right there. Hungry eat, thirsty drink. Cold, make fire. below me. I can hear him walking around, but I honestly can't see him yet because the hill's pretty steep. just feeding, they aren't paying much attention to me. With some hunts, deer sightings are few and far between. It's been three days without seeing a single deer. This small buck has me thinking, should I take the shot or should I use this opportunity to practice filming? even if this is going to be the last deer I end up seeing. Bow hunting is hard enough. Trying to film it makes it even harder. So why do I hunt an area so hard when there are places with more deer? I seem to intentionally make it hard on myself. But there's some method to the madness. Just crept in on this little fork and horn buck. <laughs> He's 35 yards. Today I'm just picked a ridge and gonna walk as far as I can up it. I feel like it's that time where deer hunting is pretty tough because they aren't velvet anymore. It's late in the archery season. And they just the bucks kind of just go into pockets by themselves and don't come out again until the rut. But it's worth a shot. I got a few days to, to hike around and look. I mean, I'm going into an area where there's not very many deer, really low densities, but there's the occasional big buck. I mean, even just seeing like a small fork at horn, it's a pretty good feat in this area. But I like hunting it because there is an opportunity for big deer. 
It's nice to be completely alone, camera in one hand, rifle in the other. I picked this spot with really low deer densities, not only for the challenge, but the solitude. The season is closing and I've yet to get a glimpse of any other deer. If I'm having trouble, I know other people would too. And that's why there's no one around, just how I like it. The difference between hikers and hunters, the hunter makes his own trail. I may not have found a deer today, but I did find this view, and it was worth the hike. I'm just going to chalk this hunt up to taking my bow for a nature walk, but without my bow, I don't think I would have been motivated to hike so many places. A hard hunt is a good hunt, whether I find a buck or not. It only makes me try harder, so I continue searching. We designed the Solo Hunter Bino Harness to be ultra-functional in the field, particularly for bow hunters. It needed to be low profile, compact, super quiet but durable, and have one-handed operation. I think for the most part, we nailed it. Archery season came and went. I ate my tag. The only deer I saw was a small forky that I chose to pass midway through the hunt. I have trouble admitting defeat, so I found a similar area with an open rifle season where I could get a tag and try to locate a buck. I know this hunt could have a similar outcome, lots of miles and few deer, but that's the game that I want to play. It would make success just that much sweeter. This morning I'm just working this ridge, glassing some really far stuff, hoping to find a deer. It's a little bit cooler in the morning, so I figure they'll be more active in the mornings. It's just been warming up in the middle of the day. But it's really thick in here. I've never hunted this area before, so my first few days are really just kind of scouting, trying to find some open grassy spots. This is probably the better elk country in here than, than mule deer country, but I really, I've got a deer tag, so I'm just gonna be working this area for deer. I always tend to pick the places where it's really hard to even find deer to hunt. Maybe that doesn't make for the best TV, but for me it's just rewarding when I know I go into an area where it's hard to get a deer and end up finding something. Sometimes you don't find anything, but it's nice to take that chance sometimes because there's just less pressure and, you know, if, if, if most guys aren't seeing a deer a day, then they're going to move spots. But I know that there's deer in this type of area. It's just it may be a few days between sightings. But I just don't have the pressure. I, I get to come out here and hunt deer that aren't hunted and are acting like deer. It's a lot harder to hunt animals that are being pressured because they aren't, they're acting like animals that are being hunted, not necessarily just in their natural state. So this would be nice to, to hunt because if I spot something, you know, I may be able to figure out where it's living. Uh, if I see a bunch of sign, you know, I can concentrate on one area. The only trouble is it's just thick in here. This is more typical of elk country than deer country, but I've never been in here, so I'm just gonna keep moving around, glassing and scouting. And then once I find a good area, hunt it. I know there are some big open meadows on some of these fingers. Just not sure which ones. Keeping your rifle protected, clean, and dry while hunting is a big priority, but so is having the ability to get at it quickly when you need it. That's where the rifle cover comes into play. I have this thing on my rifle all the time. Until it's time to pull the trigger, this rifle cover is on my rifle. Just exploring at this point. No plan on where I'm going, just 
cruising. Just cruising. Just generally pick a good steep spot that nobody else would want to walk up, walk up and see what's up there. It's kind of the, I call it scout hunting. Just picking spots, trying them until I find a spot that looks like a good spot and then I'll keep hunting it. But there's a point up here I want to get to and I can glass up this valley. As far as I know, there's no roads back here, so. That's what I'm looking for. Well, I'm looking for deer, but sometimes they live where there's no roads. Surprise. first glance these burns look pretty open but when you really sit down and look at it there's a lot of places for deer to hide especially being in an area where there's just low densities I mean, there might only be one deer per four square miles who knows so it's kind of like looking for a needle in a stack of needles <laughs> hunts like these where you may not see a lot, but you just gotta keep yourself going and know that at any given moment you could spot a, a buck. The trouble is when I get into a new area like this, I mean, a lot of thoughts go through your head when you aren't seeing anything. Uh, am I even hunting in the right place? Are there even deer around? A lot of it can just be a mental game. I'm seeing a lot of tracks. Which makes me believe that at one point there were deer here, but not a lot of other sign, and not any deer. So, I know they've been here at one point. What that means for me today, I'm not sure, but at least I know they've been here. There's a buck. A big buck. For information on Solo Hunter rifle covers or our bino harness system, or to find us on social media for exclusive photos and videos, connect with us on our website at solohunter.com. That's crazy.
crazy. I was just glassing and filming myself glassing, and then all of a sudden I look over, catch a deer's buck, and it's a nice buck. It's the kind of buck I came here looking for. I'm gonna get within 300. I'm just gonna hustle over and see if I can't buy yourself. You gotta try to keep your eyes on it. Yeah, I forgot my shooting chart, otherwise, I would have got ready and taken a shot. Closer, but I'm just hoping I can relocate because it moved off over the ridge. A lot of dead stuff in between me and where I last saw him. The hill's steep and the grass is tall. I have to get my camera as high as I can in order to see it. don't have a clean shot from this angle. I'm going to try and sneak down and get a better view from the falling log just off to my left. If I can get high enough above the grass, I'll have a clean shot, especially if I keep the deer's head behind a tree to me and his vitals open. I'm banking on the fact that he focuses on the camera while I move in for a shot. I think I made a pretty good shot, especially for standing offhand, but I practice that a lot. Man, that is a nice spot. Holy cow. That's better than I could have ever expected. I would not pass this thing up on this tag. Holy cow, that is a great deer. Oh man, I've only got two minutes left on this camera, and I don't forgot all my memory cards. Gonna have to make her quick. That's everything I could have hoped for in this type of area. Just like a mature, big body buck. This thing is huge for his body. He's definitely king of the mountain here. This old buck in an area where there's not a lot of deer. For a general area, just never been in this unit before. I mean, that's everything. Couldn't ask for more. I would shoot that buck in a limited jar area. Just look at the color. It's been rubbing on some small pines. Oh yeah, perfect shot too. That's awesome. I like that quick, clean kill. My pack is completely loaded down. I've got, I have to wear my jacket because 
there's no room for it in the bag. And that way I can throw everything else I'm just gonna have to carry up the mountain. The difference between hikers and hunters, the hunter makes his own trail. Today, persistence paid off. Going into a harder area to hunt means that when you finally find a buck, there's a good chance that it's an older mature deer. Tall rack, huge body, and better than average antlers for a general area. It's awesome to hunt hard and see the benefit. Today was an amazing day in the mountains. I always feel that the harder you work for something, the more you end up respecting it. I finished through the uphill mile. Now I've got two miles down some steep stuff. I'm home free. Whew.